collect innocent and try to catch nothing. You would pick on a hick town to start peddling. Shut up! Well, the boss's orders. We've got to get new business, haven't we? Yeah, we'll get the business all right. Jacking racketeers were after this, so I just gave him the slip. But your driver, they'll catch him. Oh, well, they can't do anything to him. He hasn't got anything. Uh, say, how about a little of that fried chicken you advertise? It'll take about 20 minutes. Oh, well, that's all right. It's cool and dark and romantic in here. I think I'll enjoy the wait. Well, just take any booth you like. Thanks. On you. Unload. What do you mean? Get out. Where's your pal? Pal? I don't know what you mean. You're packing the road? No. Search the car. Well, what's he going to search my car for? What is he looking for? We're looking for a guy that's been peddling dope to school kids. And we had a hot tip that he was in this car. In this car? Why, there's a thousand cars on a road like this one. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, if you were all right, why were you trying to get away? Well, I thought you guys were a bunch of stick-up men. Uh, nothing in the car, Chief. Well, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Say, do you run this place all alone? Oh, no. Mother and I run it together. But she's in town. Me. Business isn't very good. <laughs> Lonely on Saturdays and Sundays. But then it's quite busy. Well, it's a shame that a beautiful girl like you should waste her time here. You belong in the city. <laughs> I, uh... I think your soup's ready now. Well, that would take at least 30 or 40 minutes. We can't wait that long. Just bring us some beer. Yes. Boy, ain't she a honey? You notice how flustered she was? Go on, you tell us, Bing. I can't stand the suspense. You guessed it. They all thrill when they see me the first time. I wish you had as much luck in your line of duty. I can't understand how he slipped through our fingers after all our careful planning. See why the chief bothers with these small fry anyhow. Why not go after the big shots? Well, we gotta pick off the collectors and the peddlers and be sure of our ground not make any mistake. That's right. Well, we've got the other way. Here you are, miss. Your beer is very good. Thank you. Bye. Gee, kid, you're a dog. You sure handle that situation swell. I don't know why I did it. I don't believe those men were highwaymen. They look like officers. Don't be that way. Didn't you hear those men say they had to pick up the collectors? Well, anyway, your chicken must be ready. That is, if it isn't already burned up. You're a cinch in the city. Oh, but I couldn't leave Mother. You see, we're putting my brother through school. Yeah, but you could earn so much more money in the city. Say, I know a fellow that could put you in a show right away. <sighs> What's the matter? Got a headache? 
Oh, no, really, it's nothing. I just all the excitement, I guess. Say, I can fix that right up. I got the grandest headache medicine in the world. Here. Well, uh, how, how do you take it? In water? No, no, no. Let me show you. Give me in. Yeah. How's that? Why, that's marvelous. I feel better already. Oh, there you are. Everything all right? Well. I wish I'd have done the disappearing act. Outside, you and wait for me. Don't mind him, he's fresh, but he's harmless. Uh -huh. Say, I'd like to talk to you again about the city. Suppose I drive out in a few days and see you. Well, this is a public eating place. Why not? Fine. Well, I'll be seeing you soon. All right. Oh, you know I want to go, but... I can't now. Mother needs me. I need you, too. I've got everything all fixed up. You're not going to sacrifice both your senior career, are you? Well, couldn't we wait just a little while Eddie finishes school? Why wait? You love me, don't you? Well, I, I'm not sure. I hardly know you, Nick. And yet when I'm with you, I'm so happy and... Oh, I'm miserable and depressed when you're gone. Ah, oh, you're all nervous and upset. Here, take one of these headache powders and everything will look brighter. How do you feel now? I feel swell now. And you'll go with me next Thursday night when we get to town? We'll get married as soon as we get to town. Yes. Yes, Nick, I'll go with you. If you really want me. Well, of course I want you, honey. You're going to get plenty of thrills out of this town. <laughs> okay, kid, here's where we unload. Oh, but, but Nick, this, this can't be the place. Oh, no, you're just staying with friends of mine until we get set. We can't go to a first-class hotel until we're married. You know that. Oh, yes. That's, That's right. right. Any mail for me today? No, Miss Bradford. I'm sorry. What makes you so stubborn? Why don't you listen to reasons? Well, he, he promised to marry me. Marry? <laughs> That's what I laugh. They don't marry girls in this racket. And you'll be thankful Nick likes you well enough to want you to be his own. Otherwise... Oh, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. You won't get out of here till they're ready to let you. And then you won't want to go home. He's died first. Oh, I'm, I'm a wreck. Look. Look, will, will you give me another one of those headache powders? It ain't proud of. <laughs> oh, you poor fat. Hasn't you tumbled yet? 
Those headache powders are dope. Dope? You mean I've been taking dope? Yeah, dope. Cocaine. <gasps> the kid catcher. <laughs> kid catcher, the small name for it. Certainly knocks you punks over. Oh, Nick. Nick Drew. You haven't been giving me dope. Well, he, he had to find a... what? Oh, I hate you. I hate you. Ah, uh, you don't mean that. You're just all upset again. Try this. Oh, Nick. You didn't mean that about hating me, did you? No, Nick. No, only give it to me. And you listen to reason? Is anything, Nick, only give it to me. Morning, Miss Bergen. Morning. Well, I've got quite a bat for you today. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jim. <laughs> yeah, there she is, waiting for me. And I've got to give her the same answer. Who? Oh, yes. Mrs. Bradford. Yeah. Still looking for a letter from her daughter, Jane, who ran away. Let's see. Must have been over a year ago, wasn't it? Fourteen months. The boys are working in the city now. He writes her all the time. But she's never heard from Jane at all. That girl ought to be ashamed of herself, treating her old mother like that. Oh, I declare, I just don't know what's getting into girls these days. <laughs> yeah, it is hard to figure out. Well, I've got to be getting along. But I sure would like to bring her that letter. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Miss Morgan. Goodbye, Uncle. Okay, boss. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking the same thing myself lately. Well, better give her a day or two off to get used to the idea, huh? Okay, I'll take care of it. Lil! Lil! Who was it? That was the big boss. I got some bad news for you. Bad news for me? Get me out of the La Fonda. Then what? Well, he's putting you in the dead rat for a while. The dead rat? Why, Nick? Nick, that's the last stop before the dive. I want you got to protect me. I'm your wife. Oh, don't take it so hard. You're different. You'll come back. You're just in the... You'll find out just how different I am. You can't pull this on me, you rat! Uh, I don't get hysterical. The boss said to take a day or two off. So get ready and come along with me. I'm gonna make some deliveries. How do you do? Hello, good looking. I'll have a chocolate malt and make it thick. And you, sir? Make loads of tomato juice. I only come in here to see him. He's so good looking. You're always questing, aren't you, Dorothy? Questing? What do you mean by that? Oh, that's an old, seldom used word that means always looking, searching for something. And the way you look over every man and boy, you see, it reminds me of it. But you want to be careful. It might be dangerous. Maybe I'm always looking for my prince to come along. Jealous? Yes, a little. But a little worried about you. Oh, don't worry, Dan. I just like to play around. But I'm all right. Hi, kid. How's every little thing? Well... Rather good looking, isn't he? Yeah. Another prospect? You said it, boy. I could go for her. 
Well, forget it, big boy. That car doesn't fall for men like you. Well, they all fall when the old master starts to work. And I am working now. You certainly hate yourself, don't you? You want to be careful, Dorothy. You'll get your wings thin someday. Do you know who that bird is? Mm-mm, who? Well, he's Nick Proven. He's front man for one of the toughest mobs in town. And he's accused of, well, many things. Ooh, how thrilling. Come on, let's get out of here. Hey, what's the rush? You ain't going anyplace in particular. That boy in there is my brother. What? Come on, let's get out of here before he sees us. Right. Oh, you must have what it takes. What do you mean? Well, they all fall for you. I'm beginning to myself. That gangster's mom was just asking about you. She used to be a swell looker. Yeah. Boy, she looks plenty tough now. <laughs> Did you have a good day today? Oh, swell. The whole week's been good. After I give the his cut, I'll have over $40 left. Gee, that is swell. I only have about, about 25. Oh, dames don't tip like men. They pay off in smiles instead of nickels and quarters. Well, I'll be glad to have my 25. <laughs> you know, with all this money, I feel like making whoopee tonight. How about you and me going dust treat and taking in a nightclub? What do you say, Eddie? Well, I don't know anything about nightclubs. I've never even been in one. Besides, I'm... I'm kind of tired tonight. Say, hey, I've got something that will fix that up. Come here. School will be out in a few minutes. I think I'll stick around and see if my kid customers have got any money today. Nothing. So, before you are through, you'll be lower than I ever was or can be. Well, how do you feel now? Oh, great. <laughs> and you want to make whoopee tonight? Bad. I always just want to see the inside of a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll meet you here at 9 o'clock. Boy, but it's here, take my hand. Watch your step. Why don't they light up these places? Lots of things around here won't stand much light, you know. but she isn't half as pretty as you, Fanny. Oh, my Eddie, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. He wrote that song for her. Did he die? No, stupid. He's got another sweetheart.
That was swell of you, Fanny. I didn't know it was so expensive here. <laughs> That's all right. It was my party anyway. Let's go. What, are you leaving already? Yes, I think we'd better be going. Well, how did you get out here? In a taxi. Well, we're leaving too, so if you meet us outside, we'll take it wherever you want to go to. Oh, thanks. Thank Great. you. Say, who said we were going home? And who are you to be giving orders to every party? I'm just a fella trying to keep a certain silly little girl out of trouble. You're just a bum sport trying to keep me from having any thrills at all. <laughs> but you're going home just the same. Or me. I'm your father, and sometimes not altogether proud of that honor. All right, father. And why the early morning call? I heard you bid your friends good night last night. And I heard you say you were going to arrange soon to go down to the dead rat night club and start something. Eavesdropper, you'd make a great detective, father. So what? I don't want you fooling around such places. I have heard the dead rat is tough, plenty tough. Is that so? Now I'll just have to go down and see for myself. Haven't you any pride or decency left? You used to be sweet and clean. Yes, and you used to waste a little time and attention on me. 
Now you're always away at your brokerage office and mother is forever off playing contracts. So what am I to do? Sit around and weep by myself? But I have to spend lots of time at the office. You know the terrible condition business is in all over the country. Why don't you associate with nicer young folks? The society crowd. Because with all your money, we just don't seem to rate in society. I don't know why. Oh, Dad, don't worry about me. I'm all right. It's just that you're so respectable and serious-minded about things. You're way behind life as it's lived today. Maybe you're right. But stay away from the dead rat. I won't exactly promise, but I'll give it respectful consideration. Eddie? Rot. Oh. <laughs> so have you any more of those headache powders? Sure. Can I have one? Yes. Come on around back. I'm going to take you out where it isn't so expensive and we won't get the bums rush. <laughs> and will we have fun? Yeah, what's doing? Really? I'm going to take you on a sleigh ride with some snowbirds. Sleigh ride? Yeah. Snowbirds? Uh -huh. In the summer? Gosh, you are dumb. Hey, how about my cup of coffee? Oh, all right. letters for me today, Jim? I'm sorry, Miss Bradford. None today. Maybe we'll have better luck tomorrow. No letters. Even Eddie hasn't written for six months. He used to write every week. Oh, shucks. You don't know how boys are when they get to a city. They're just too busy to write. Or maybe, maybe he's figuring on walking in and surprising you someday. <laughs> I guess that's it. Sure. <laughs> the boss wants to see you. You wanted to see me, Mr. Boss? Yes, I'm very sorry, Fanny, but we can't use you here any longer. But, but why? Well, your work has been rather unsatisfactory, and you haven't been careful about your personal appearance like we like our girls to be. But you know, I haven't been feeling well lately. I'll be all right in a few days. And besides, we've been hearing rather ugly rumors about you. We can't regulate the private affairs of our employees, but we can and must get rid of those whose personal conduct doesn't please us. That's all. You get fired, Fanny? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of man's town. I've been so worried about you. 
Well, I didn't find a job, so I've been sleeping in the park lately. The benches were just cold and wet tonight, did I? Well, why didn't you come to me? I have a part-time job now. I, I didn't know where to find you until today. I had to move. But now that I've got this job, we'll get along swell, Eddie. We? Sure. I, I can't do that, Fanny. I can't stay here. We're not married. The first money we get, we'll be married. Oh, don't you see? We've got to stick together and fight this thing out. Gee, Fanny. You're swell. Someday I'll make this all up to you. Did you work today? No. No one seemed to need even a part-time or relief girl. But one of the girls at the drive-in gave me these donuts. Donuts? Donuts? I can't eat. I don't want food. I want a shot. I've got to have a shot. Oh, Shannon, please. Why, good evening, Mrs. Grady. Don't try to stall. You know what I want. And if I don't get it, out you go in the morning. Oh, please. I think I'm going to get a job tomorrow. Then I'll have the rent all paid up. Why don't he go out and look for work? Laying around here and skulking through alleys week after week? And you tramping the streets looking for stray jobs? But he can't work, Mrs. Grady. He's sick. Sick? Hmm. Looks to me more like a hothead. Well, I'll give you one more day. Hothead. Hophead. <laughs> Please, Eddie, don't go to pieces. You've got to get hold of yourself. I can't get hold of myself. i got to have dope. I'm a hophead. I'd sell my soul for just one shot. <laughs> All right, Eddie. If you need it that bad, I'll get it for you. On your way, kid. Don't hang around here. Very, very bad if you don't. Oh, 
Mustn't be. Look at the disgrace. My mother. But Eddie, think of me. Think of you. What do I care about you? You love me, don't you? No. No, I never really loved you. Now a baby born to a hothead in the street. Don't, Eddie. Whatever I've done is because I loved you. Down to Wong Lee's and sleep it off. Eddie, you didn't mean what you said about not loving me ever, did you? Won't you kiss me just once?
presenting our very capable master of ceremonies for this evening, a genial and well-known gentleman, Mr. Murray Peck, who in turn will present the floor show for this evening. Mr. Murray Peck. <laughs> Welcome to you this evening. At this time, it gives me pleasure to present to you the first edition of our floor show as we open with that comedian of song, Noni Lee, singing All I Want Is You. <laughs> on the girl in the dope racket. He wants to quit. What? He can't quit. Nobody can quit the rackets and live. Not when they're in as deep as he is, anyway. Why don't you let him quit? He'll be the big shot then. I am the big shot now. He only thinks he is. But I need him for a front for a while, anyway. Why the girl? She's bugs about cute little blondes. I'm going to give it to him as bait. That'll keep him quiet until I need him. Hurry up, can't you? composition, Housey Mongole. <laughs> If you love me 
ladies and gentlemen, concludes our show. We have another show at 2 o'clock. Now let everybody dance. Take it away, Al. If you, this is my brother. Eddie. Jane. No. No, not Jane. There isn't any more Jane. I'm Lil, a gangster's discarded mall. Do you understand that, Eddie? No one must ever connect me with Jane Bradford. Oh, but what are you doing here? The city. I came to find you and, and take you home. You must get away. Back to the country in sunshine. It isn't too late for you. Yes. Yes, yes, we'll go home now. No. No, it's too late for me. Girls can't come back. Oh, but you can, Eddie. You must. No, no. I'm a, I'm a dope. I'm a hophead. No, you're not. You're just in the first stages. You can snap out of it. Eddie, you must. You've got to go home. No, I can't go home. I have no way, no money. I'll get you the money. Lots of it. Where do you live? This is Gray's rooming house on Charles Street. You go home and wait for me. You've got to see Nick. They told me over to the founder that he came here. Well, you can't go in. You know, they put a rough on girls they don't want around. Oh, I don't care what they do to me. I must see Nick. Listen. You were pretty bright when you were in the money. But I'm going to take a chance. You know, they'd put me on that spot if they ever found out. Nick's down at the hideaway. Just took a girl there. Come on, you. Beat it. You can't hang around here. 
I smelled gas in the hall. So I opened the door and come in. The place was fairly blue. And there she lay, just as she is now. And so I sent for you and a doctor. She won't need a doctor. The coroner. You see that no one enters here and disturbs anything until I get back. Do you, uh, think it was suicide? No, Mrs. Grady. I think we'd be justified in considering it accidental. Poor kid. Don't be so stubborn, dearie. Why, if you only listen to reason. Why don't you listen to reason? My father is rich. If you let me out of here, I'll give you a thousand dollars. For a million, dearie. I want to live a little while. Oh, what are they going to do with me? I heard Nick say the big chief's very fond of cute little blondes. They wouldn't dare do that to me. My father would have them hung. Yeah, by the time you're able to get word to your father, you won't want to. Why, you'd be ashamed to ever see him again. Nick, Nick, it's Lil. Let me in. I've got to see him. This old hop probably crazy for a shot. Where's Nick? They told me he was here. I've got to see him. Nick's gone to call the big chief. Couldn't call his number from this place. Now, you'd better not be here when he gets back. I've got to see him. I've got to have some money alone. Yes, you know, he wouldn't give you a cup of coffee. He's through with you. You say you need money? All right, I'll give you money. A thousand dollars if you'll get me out of here. A thousand dollars? Shut up, you fool, and get out. You wouldn't be put on the top it. You say you'll give me a thousand dollars. You mean it? I swear it. Give me that key. They'll kill you for this. I don't care what they do to me. I'm going to earn that thousand dollars. Now give me that key. No, don't come. We'd never get out of here alone. I'll phone for help. Give me the police. No, come to 76 Byron Street, quick. It's life or death. Nick! Tommy! Help! You keep quiet. Get hold of yourself. Help's coming. What's this, Nick? What are you doing here? Stop, Nick, or I'll kill you! You wouldn't dare. Drop that gas. That's the big chief. Drop that gun and get out of here before he gets here. Stop, Nick! I swear I'll kill you! I did. Well, you ought to get a medal for it. But the most I think hang you. They had, Dan. She did it in self-defense. Well, I've been after you a long time. I didn't think I'd get the goods on you this way. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You're rotten, Polly. I didn't think you'd drag her into this. You're crazy, Copper. Nick grabbed this girl at the dead rest. He had nothing to do with it. Well, what's he doing here? Well, I, I phoned him just before I phoned you. Well, that's quick thinking, Lil, but it's no use. I'll have your job for this. No, you won't, Folly. All your pulling money's not going to cover you up this time. We've got you dead to right. Are you accusing my father of being a criminal? A, a gangster? I'm sorry, Dorothy, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Your father's a mysterious big shot and brains behind all this rotten mess of rackets. 
You lie, Dan. I know that isn't true. No, it isn't true. He was the big shot. He's a funny man, isn't he? Yeah, he's a funny man. Yeah, he's a true, all right. Jack, take him outside. It was a nice gesture. You will remember that at your trial. It isn't true, Dad. It can't be. Don't worry, Dorothy. Everything will be all right. Take that other woman as a serial witness. Hey, you can't reach me. You've got nothing on me. Let me go. Chief, you won't let him take me. You'll protect me, won't you, Shut up. Hey. Go on, quietly. And it is true. You are a racketeer. Where did you think the money was coming from? That you and your mother have been throwing away? Oh, Bob, take him down the wagon. Now, be careful. He's pretty hard. I'll see that Dorothy gets home all right. So you've been making love to me all this time, just so you could spy on my father. Well, that was a general idea in the beginning. But lately, well, I've, I've fallen for you, Dorothy. All right. <laughs> So you see, it's all in line of duty. Just who are you, Dan? I'm lieutenant in charge of the vice squad. Maybe that explains why you're always so bossy. Well, it explains why I'm always around trying to keep silly little girls out of jams. Please, Dan, don't scold me. If I don't scold you, will you promise me one thing? What? That you'll stop this questing? I don't need to go questing anymore. I've found my friend. 